Today's tutorial is about spotting and setting up click tracks in Logic Pro X. Spotting is the process where the director, the producer, and the editor and the composer would get together, and they needed to fundamentally decide three things. The first one was where the music started and where the music stopped. The second one was specific cuts or edits that needed to be hit or synchronized. And the third one was the general function of the music or what mood it is. Traditionally, spotting required a certain amount of math. If you knew the number of beats and the time, you could calculate the tempo. If you knew the tempo you wanted and the amount of time you were dealing with, you could calculate the number of beats. And if you knew the number of beats and the tempo, you could calculate the amount of time. Today I'm going to show you the Tom Miller method of setting up click tracks in Logic Pro X, a method that I've been using for years and doesn't require any math calculations. You have been assigned a scene from Blade Runner to score. After extensive discussions with the producer and the director, it was decided that there are three hits that need to be synchronized. The music should start out energetic, rhythmic, and very synth-oriented, and should build up to the first glass break. After Zora crashes through the first glass, the music should be slower, reminiscent of the original Vangelis score. This slow music should pause and land dramatically on the last glass break. Finally, the music should resolve on the cut to Decker after Zora's death. Music was originally spotted by taking timings and adjusting the tempo to the picture on the recording stage. This method had limitations though. If you missed your hit, you could slide the recording forwards or backwards to line it up, but this method would only support one hit. Music editors could supply aids to assist in this synchronization on the recording stage. The first one was a streamer. A streamer is a vertical line that scrolls across the film and ends up in a punch. A punch signifies the hit. Here you can see a streamer leading to the punch on the edit. When the conductor on the recording stage saw the streamer, he would know to speed up or slow down to match the hit. The click track was introduced in Alice in Wonderland in 1934. Music editors would prepare loops of 35 millimeter film on which they had actually punched holes in the optical track at regular intervals. As these went by the photo cell, they would click. If film runs at 24 frames per second, 24 frames between clicks would produce one click per second, or 60 BPM, and 12 frames between clicks would produce two clicks per second, or 120 BPM. Beats per minute and sequencers are usually divided into a thousand units, allowing incredible accuracy. Okay, let's take a look at this method for calculating tempos and click tracks without math. We have uh, started a new project here. Um, we're going to go take a look at our project preferences, settings, general. We want to ensure here that it says use musical grid because we'll be working with bars and beats. We want to check our frame rate, 29.97. We're going to double check our recording preferences, 24-bit wave. And let's check our audio preferences, sample rate, 48. We're all good there. We have opened a movie. This is our scene from Blade Runner. And as we discussed, we have three uh, hits that we need to synchronize. We have extracted the audio, and it is currently on the first audio track. So we need to find our first hit. The first hit is where Zora crashes through the first glass pane. So we have established that this is the cut. Uh, one minute, ten seconds, four frames. And we're going to go over here to marker and we're going to create a marker. Now, Logic has the ability to round off markers to the nearest beat and bar, but because we're working with exact scenes in a, a movie, we want to create without rounding. Now, 
logic supports two kinds of markers. There are standard markers. Standard markers are synced to bars and beats. However, when you're working with video, what we want is our markers need to be locked to a SMPTE number. So as we change uh, tempos, they do not change. So I'm going to control click here and say convert to scene marker. You notice I now have the SMPTE clock over here. And I can also name this. And we'll call this first crash. So we now have a marker here. Now, what we want to do is set up a tempo that's going to bring this first marker in on a strong beat. Um, what you really have to do at this point is this is where you need to actually write some music. You need to sit down and figure out a rough tempo for this section. So what I've done is created this kind of a drum beat. Take our audio out. So I got this kind of a groove going. I have a 16th note hi-hat. And I put some actual drums on. This is a drum patch that was actually created using sound effects from a hospital respirator. Now, what's important about this is I know an approximate tempo. Uh, I started out at 120. 120 is always a good place to start out because at 4-4 you get 30 measures per minute or a measure every two seconds. It's an easy way to keep track of it. 120 was a little fast. 115 also feels a little fast. I think it probably needs to be closer to 112 or 110. But here's where the trick comes in. Let's turn these off. I'm going to open up the marker window, navigate, open marker list, and I have my list of markers here. I actually went in and put in the other two, uh, to save some time, I went in and put in the other two sync points. So here are the three sync points, first crash, last crash, and the cut to Decker. Now, what we want to do is we want to adjust our tempo here. This is our starting tempo. We want to adjust this tempo to make the first crash here come in on a strong beat. We're currently at measure 34, beat three and a half roughly. Um, if we come in at 33, that gives us four eight measure phrases and it's going to feel very natural. So rather than sit and calculate that, I'm going to adjust my tempo here. And you'll notice if you look over here at the marker, this is slowly moving towards measure 33. Now I've even gone a little too far. Thirty-two, four, two, thirty. Thirty-two, four, nine hundred. All right, thirty-three, one, fifty-seven. So we've gone a little past it. So let's bring this back. And all I'm doing is adjusting the tempo by thousands of a beat per minute. And now I've created this first mark to be here at measure 33. So I have four eight measure phrases. So this works very naturally. Now the tempo is 103.3508. That allows me a level of specificity here um, in the first crash. So I now have four eight measure phrases. Well, again, what was important was to set up a groove and figure out about what you want your basic tempo to be. All right, now we talked about at measure 33 after this first crash, I want a change in tempo. I want it slower. So I need to go over here to the tempo window and I need to put in a tempo change. Options, tempo operations. So at measure 33, I want a tempo change. And I had already figured out that this tempo needs to be somewhere around 80 BPM. So let's adjust this. Put in tempo change somewhere around 80. 
and I'll click apply. Oh, I want to be having constant tempo. I don't want a tempo uh, curve. I want a constant tempo at measure 33 of somewhere around 80, say 81. I'm going to click apply. It's going to give me a tempo change here at measure 33. And you notice this last glass crash is now at measure 45, beat 4, uh, roughly the eighth note, 494. So if I had subtly adjust this tempo, I should be able to make this come out cleanly at measure 46. And again, I'm just adjusting a tempo by hundreds or tenths of a beat per minute. And again, I'm doing this without having to sit down with a calculator. All I'm doing is adjusting the tempo. All right, 46, 1, 3, 2, 1. Save that. So I've adjusted the tempo to make the next uh, hit come out on an even beat. So I know now I have from measure 33 to measure 46 of this slower tempo. And I said I wanted it somewhere around 80. I've now created it at 82. All right. Now, at four, measure 46, we want to come up with the, the Decker cut. Again, we're shooting, put this on a strong beat. So let's insert the tempo change here at measure 46. Um, and we want this tempo to be roughly the same. So let's set this up to 80. Click apply. And we've put a tempo change here at measure 46. Now, we look at Decker. Decker's coming out at measure 50, beat 2, 150. So if we adjust this tempo, we're just slowly going to bring the tempo down by tenths of a beat per minute. I now have Decker at measure 50, 1, 8, 60. Bring this down a little more. And again, it's not crucial that they come out in strong beats, but it will make your music sound rhythmically more accurate. All right, so if we look at this, I mean, now tempo is now 75.5487. But if we look at Decker now comes out on strong beat, we know from the last glass crash I have four solid measures, and then the cut to Decker. So what I've done is made scene markers, adjusted the tempo to make the scene markers come out on strong beats. Thank you.